Art Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of Fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark, presented by Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you're already a member of this weirdo family, Please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. Spreading the word about the show helps it to grow. If you're here because you're already a fan of nostalgic audio and print, you'll want to email WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. When you do that, you'll get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows for free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. Coming up, it's an episode from Dark Venture. Not to be confused with the old-time radio series Dark Fantasy, which we heard last week, Dark Venture is a psychological thriller show that keeps you on the edge of your seat. The show centered on horror and mystery and aired from 1945 to 1947 with John Lake as the narrator. It was a different kind of thriller where the listeners were able to go into the twisted mind of the killer and learn about his plans and thoughts. Although the methods through which the killers murdered their targets weren't exactly creative, the listeners still found the show particularly interesting because of the way the killing is plotted and how the killer can sometimes get away with it. Even though John Lake was the official narrator all throughout the series' run, most of the narrating in each episode is provided by the character of the killer, a very unique idea, especially for the time. In this episode, a robbery that leads to a murder turns into a desperate attempt to elude the police. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness as we listen to Dark Venture from July 31st, 1945 and Pursuit. Dark Venture Over the minds of mortal men come many shadows, shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Darkness is the absence of light. So in the sudden shadows which fog the minds of men and women are to be found the strange impulses which urge them on to their venture in the dark. There are some men whose entire lives are concerned with evil. They're born to flourish and die in the shadows. Their every move is a venture in the dark. It is a story we tell you tonight as we present Marvin Miller and Eric Snowden in Pursuit. <laughs> A dark, deserted side street within the inner reaches of London. In the distance, Big Ben somberly tolls the evening hour. Quiet now. Here he comes. You see, Henry? You see how I followed your orders? Every day for a week I've watched him. Not so loud. Every day he takes the same streets. A tedious little man walled in by habit. What's that? Nothing, Lord, nothing. 
And so he has the money. Sure as death, Henry. When he left his office, he was counting the notes. <laughs> See how thorough I am? All right, now shut up. When he gets here, you know what to do. Don't make any mistakes this time. Well, what did I ever do that was... Shut up, I said. It is. Go on. Uh, big pardon, sir? Uh, oh, what's that? You wouldn't happen to have a match now, would you? Oh. oh, a match? You startled me for a moment. I didn't see you there in the darkness. Yes, certainly I have a match. Would you care for a smoke? No, thank you. Yeah, I'll strike the match for you. Blow out that flame bot. What? Keep your hands just where they are now. You shouldn't have let him strike that match, you fool. Yeah, but Get I... down the street and keep a sharp watch. Now, see here, I... Go on, Bart, move. All right, Henry, but, but I didn't mean to have him strike the match. Swap me, I didn't. Go right to your wallet. You'll not get away with this. It's all clear, Henry. I have influence, I want you to know. Great influence. You've picked the wrong man tonight. Now stop jabbering. Take that ring off your finger. Come on, get it off. What are you trembling about? A man with your influence? The ring's stuck. You better hurry and get it off, mister. Uh, uh, here you are. Someone's coming down the street. You see? You'll never get away with it. Now your pocket watch, hung so elegantly across your plump stomach. Henry, they're still coming. Hurry. Uh, Fine-looking watch. You'll pay for this. You'll see. I'll have you tracked down. Remember, I saw your faces when I struck the light. Do I? You did at that, didn't you? Well, well, at least I, I think I... Henry, it's two of them. They're just down the street. I'm almost through. You know, it's too bad you've such keen eyesight, my friend. I really don't think I could identify you positively. I mean, I, I just caught a momentary glimpse. I... Yes. Please, please don't do anything to me. I've got three children at home. That's very unfortunate. I feel so sorry for your three children. Don't use that gun. Please. I'll give you anything. I'll... Henry! You shot him! You shouldn't have done that, Henry. What's this, Bart? Are you trying to tell me what to do? No, but you heard what he said. He's a man of influence. Don't let that bother you, Bart. His influence is now at an end. <laughs> I'll be glad to get in the house tonight, right enough. This night's done me in. It's a fine night, Bart. Look at those stars winking down at us as if they shared our every secret. <laughs> there you go, talking crazy again. I wonder what we got out of him. We'll count it when we get in the room. You see how I'm learning, Henry? Knew just the streets he'd take and right to the minute. Yes, it was also very clever of you to let him strike that match. Uh, well, uh, here we are, home sweet home, up the stairs He's and... walking down the street. What? Do as I say. Sure, Henry. Walk natural, not too fast. What's wrong? I don't know. But there were two policemen waiting for us in the hallway. <laughs> This is Henry Bell, Mrs. Graham. What are you calling me for? I don't want no trouble. Oh, I'm trying to keep you from trouble. A friend of mine said he passed your rooming house tonight. There were police in the hallway. He knew I roomed with you, so he told me. I just called to see if I could be of help, that's all. Who are you trying to fool, Henry Bell? Yeah? You know why the police are at my house. They're waiting for you and Bart. For me? I should go right into the hall and call them. Where are you telephoning from? Well, what do they want of us? By the looks of them, it's no social call then, my kid. Well, we've not done anything. Well, that's not what they say. They say you've killed a man. A very important man. That's a lie. Not according to them. The man saw your faces for a moment. From his description before he died, the police know it's you and Bart. Thank you very much, Mrs. Graham. Wait, don't go yet. I find out anything else, where can I reach you? What's that? What are you trying to pull off? Nothing, nothing at all. I 
just want to help you and Bart, that's all. Goodbye, Mrs. Gray. No, don't hang up yet. Do you think I'm going to give you time to trace this call? I'm so sorry. I can't oblige. Give me the phone. Bell, this is Inspector Lane of Scotland Yard. Yes, Inspector. Goodbye to you, too. It's no use, Bell. You have no chance in the world. Give yourself up. I don't think so, Inspector. You shot the wrong man tonight, Bell. You shot Donald Bailey. The right honourable Donald Bailey with a seat in the House of Commons. I'm getting up in the world, aren't I? We'll catch you before morning. We're forming a dragnet that stretches across the entire city. You can't escape. Is that so, Inspector? Would you like to wager on it? Well, did you get the train tickets? I couldn't, Henry. I just couldn't. They got coppers all over the railway station. Starts to do anything right anymore. What are we going to do, Henry? What are we going to do? Hello, Dick. Listen, you've got to hide us out. We've been running from the police all night. We can't take it much longer. Uh, Dick? Dick, are you there? Hello? Hello, hello? Henry. Not so loud. Will he help us? I'm worn out, I tell you. I'm worn out. Will he help us? He wants no part of us. No one in the old blooming city will help us, and that's a fact. The young great. And that ain't all, Henry. What? The coppers have thrown a barricade around this entire district. Won't let anyone in or out. And all the time they're squeezing in tighter. Squeezing in tighter, Henry. <laughs> What makes you think Sam will help us, Henry? Sam will do anything for money. You shouldn't have killed him, Henry. Not a right honourable gentleman like him. Right honourable gentleman. What else should I have done? I don't know. You're the one that always figures out. You're supposed to watch out for us. I am watching out for us. If you hadn't let him strike that match and let him see our faces, this would never have happened. Oh, I do like you tell me, Henry. It's like I always say, you've got the brains, but you need more than brains, and that's where I come in. Then do as I tell you now. Stop talking. Come along. Wait. Look. There's someone walking down the street. Let him walk. Act natural. I think it's a copper, Henry. Just keep walking. Here, let's turn down the street. Henry. Henry. I tell you, it's a copper. Look. He's turning down the street with us. All right. Just take it easy. Don't do anything to raise his suspicion. I'm scared, Henry. I'm scared. Shut up. Yeah, you see, he didn't follow us. Here, yeah, that's Sam's house just ahead. He'll hide us out. I hope so. Up these stairs. I'll ring the bell. Why doesn't he answer? Take it easy. Where is he? Who's there? It's me, Sam. Henry. Okay. Sam, we're in trouble. Terrible trouble. Quiet, Bart. Sam, we got into a little mix-up tonight. I heard all about it. Yeah. Come we're, on. We're obliged, Sam. Much obliged. Been, been running from the coppers all night. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, sit down. Rest yourself. <laughs> Bart gets a bit excited, Sam. It's really not that bad. Not bad, he says. How much did you get off the game? Well, we haven't counted it yet. Look, every cop in town is looking for you. I'm taking a big chance doing this. What do you mean, Sam? How much did you get? Oh, uh, we'll take care of you, Sam. I'll take care of myself. So that's the way it is, eh? That's the way it is. It's a dirty trick. You think so? Come here to the window, both of you. Look through these curtains. The copper. Right. Yeah, he's the one that was following us. You see, I'm sticking my neck way out. And I'm not doing it for my help. Who? Uh, we didn't get very much, Sam. Don't give me that. Come on, let's see it. But... Yes, Henry? I want to talk to Sam alone. Uh, but, Henry, we don't have no secrets, you and I. We are partners, we are. Uh, but... 
Why don't you go in the back and wash up, huh? You but do I... as Sam says, Bart. Well, go on. All right, all right. But it's a mighty peculiar way for a partner to act, if you ask me. Now, what did you want to talk about, Henry? I need the money I got tonight, Sam. I've got plans. Great plans running through my brain. You have, huh? <laughs> you don't imagine for one minute, do you, Sam, that I'm content doing what I am now? Bart seems content. Oh, that ox. If he hadn't let that fellow strike that match, we wouldn't have been in this mess at all. No, I'm afraid my plans go beyond my friend Bart. Well, what's all this got to do with me? You're from America, where they know how to think big. I admire you, Sam. You think like I think. You're quick to grab hold of an opportunity when it presents itself. I like that in a man. Well? I've got a few deals in my mind where I could use a man like you. You're smart, Sam. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I know one thing. I'm too smart to hook up with a marked man. Not. You killed the wrong fellow, Henry. No, but that was Bart's fault. I don't care whose fault it was. You got a date with a noose. You may delay it by thrashing about this way and that, but in the end, they'll catch you. That's not true. Have you finished your little talk, you two? I think so. I'll take the wallet, Henry. It's not fair, Sam. All right, I'm a reasonable man. I'll take nothing, and you can go back to the street. Here's the wallet. Thank you. After all, Henry, you just said you admired me because I grab hold of an opportunity when it presents itself. Anything else? Just this ring. How about cufflinks or watches? Didn't you pick the guy's watch? He wasn't carrying a watch. Okay. You two go in the next room and get some sleep. Go on. Yeah, I'm so fagged out, I could sleep forever. You'll be on the lookout, won't you, Sam? Sure. Sure. Go on, go to sleep and don't worry. Lighter. He had no business taking the ring and wallet. Well, there ain't much we can do about it. He took everything. Not everything. What do you mean? I'm not exactly a fool, Bart. Look at this watch. Didn't get that. Say, that looks pretty. It's a fine watch, solid gold. Yeah, we'll be able to get ten pounds on that, all right. Ten pounds, nothing. I'm... I'm retaining this watch. I've been needing one for some time now. Yeah, that ain't fair, Henry. Why not? Oh, we're supposed to be partners. We are. That means 50-50 on everything. Don't be such a fool, Bart. I'm the one that runs this little partnership. Remember that. Well, all the same. All the same, nothing. I'm keeping this watch, and I don't want to hear you mention it again. You're acting mighty queer, Henry. You didn't used to be like this. Perhaps I don't appreciate your stupidity as much as I should. Yes, perhaps that's it. Well, tonight was just a mistake. Just a mistake. Where are you going? I'm going to turn out the lights. Why? I want to see if that copper's still out in front. Well, that's more like it, Bart. It shows some signs of having a brain when you think of things like that. I'll just raise this blind a bit and... Henry! Stop shouting like that. Come here, quick. What is it now? Look down there on the street. Where? There's Sam talking to the policeman, and he's pointing to this house. Why, that... Now they're coming across the street. What are we going to do? Come on, quick. There's a back entrance to this house. Where can we go now? We've no time to think about that. Let's get out of here. Gents, cup of tea. Same for me. Two cups of tea. Nothing else? I've got some fine slab cake. Nothing else, just tea. Tea it is. What are we going to do? Let me think. If we only had enough money to get away, we could hire a car. No use talking about that. We haven't a penny. Oh, you could get some money for that watch. At this time of night. Oh, we could find a pawn shop somewhere. We, we could sell it to someone on the street. It's out. I have a right to keep the watch. It gives me a certain distinction. I don't intend to give it up. But it's our... Shh! Waiter's coming back. Here's your tea. 
You sure you don't want some slab cake? How late do you stay open? Till midnight. The underground train stop running at half past eleven. And I get a pretty good trade from them. Oh. Uh, suppose you bring me a slice of that cake, if it's as good as you say it is. Slab cake, right, too. Do you hear what he said? Does a good business here. Yeah, must have plenty in the till. That's what you're thinking, eh, Henry? If we had enough money, we could get away from here till it cools off. Yeah, that's right. Do you suppose you could do something right for a change? Oh, Henry, I didn't mean to. Here he comes again. Here you are. Now, if you don't mind, I want to get the news. It's just coming on. This is the BBC News resume. The conference at Potsdam is proceeding well, according to reports. Prime Minister Attlee has returned to Next Potsdam time he comes back, we'll do it. Section. All right, Henry. When I put the gun on him, you make a rush for the cash register. You have to move fast because a customer might come in at any minute. Wait. Listen to the wireless. It's about us. Huh? Promise an arrest within a very few hours. Names and descriptions of the criminals are known to the authorities. Every means of escape is being watched. Why don't we give ourselves up, Henry? I tell you, it's no use. We'll not give ourselves up. But... Uh, I told you before, I'm making the decisions. They're getting closer all the time. I can feel it. I can, like a noose round me neck. Don't talk like that. And all for nothing. All we got out of it was an old watch. That's the brakes of the game. It's a mighty fine watch. All the time getting closer. You heard what the wireless said. There's nothing left for us to do. Here comes a car down the street. Yes, here, in this doorway. Stop him. All right, men. Let's give this block the going over. They can't be far from us now. You hear that? Yes, I hear it all right. Let's give up, Henry. No. Maybe they'll give us a chance. They'll not give us any chance. Hurry, walk down this alleyway. Keep close to the wall. We'll never get away. They haven't caught us yet, my lad. The night's only begun. Wait a minute. What's that entrance down there at the end of the street? I don't see it. There, there, with the warning lights burning over it. Hey, look. Looks like the subway entrance. There's a sign on it. Let's see if I can read it by the light of a street lamp. Yeah, the cops will be on us in a few moments. Be quiet. Let me see. Station no longer in use. Enter through Brighton Station, two squares north. Come on, Henry. This gives me an idea. We can't waste any time. You remember what the waiter said? What? He said the train stopped running at 11.30. After that, the tube's empty until early morning. Well? Let me look at my watch. Almost 20 minutes to 12. We finally got a break. What do you mean? The subways will be empty. We can escape through the tube. Is it safe? Oh, certainly it's safe. Look at the watch for yourself. 11.40, it says. Hey, you! Henry, it's Stop. them. Stop! Tell me, Steps, hurry! There they go! Watch for it! Hurry, hurry. Oh, my ankle. Oh, come on, I come on. Can't. Yes, you can. They're going down that subway. Bring up the lights. We're trapped, Henry. No, we're not. We're going along the tracks. But it's dangerous. It's not dangerous. Remember the train stopped running 15 minutes ago. Come on. Ooh, my ankle hurts. Do you see them anywhere? No, they must have gone down the lines. All right, after them. Henry, they'll catch us this time. No, they won't. No. I keep stumbling against the rails. I'm going to light a match and see where we are. But that's what got us into trouble before, Henry. We have to take a chance now. There they are. Come out, man. We've got your cut off. Henry! Forget it. We have a way out. A way out? Where? I can see it in the light. Just a few feet, the subway branches off. We have a 50 50 chance if we take the tunnel to the left. Two constables wouldn't dare split up knowing I have a gun. Yeah, maybe that's right. I know it's right. Bill, are you coming out? I'm afraid I can't oblige, Inspector. Afraid I can't oblige. Come here. I think we're going to be all right. I told you so. 
They took the main tunnel, just as I figured. You get frightened too easily, Bart. Yeah, but it's so black in here and narrow. Just room for the rails. That's what it was made for. We'll have to be careful to get out before morning, before the trains start running again. You won't have to worry about that. But if we went to sleep... Oh, I have to think about what would happen. I said, you won't have to worry about that. What do you mean, Henry? I've been thinking. About what? About a lot of things. You know, being down here a hundred feet beneath the earth is good for the mind. Ah, uh, there you go talking crazy again. Oh, crazy, is it, about? Well, here's something for you to think over, my boy. What are you talking about? You're stupid, Bart. You know that, don't you? Well, you're big and strong, but you can't think, Bart. You rely on me for everything. Well, I'll do my best, Henry. You can't say that I... You have a very bad habit of interrupting, Bart. I'm sorry. Didn't you ever wonder why I bothered to take you along with me on these jobs? Well, I... Well, I'll tell you, Bart. I'm a man of mentality. I'm a planner. But I don't like to soil my hands with dirty work. That's why I let you hang around, just to do my dirty work. Well, I always figure you need more than brains. You need muscles, too. I didn't think it was dirty work, Henry. I don't know what you're getting at. Just this. You're no help to me anymore. You've hurt your ankle, and in the morning you have trouble moving around. And then, too, your attitude's been annoying me. Well, what, what have I when done? When I'm then? annoyed by someone, I just walk out on them. Henry! But in your case, there's a drawback to that. You see, I don't want you around to talk to the police, Bart. So there's only one thing I can do. I'll have to kill you. You may have the brains, Henry, but I'm strong enough to kill you with one swipe. There you are, Bart. You forget I have the gun. Strange, isn't it, how a gun can make me just as strong as you? Don't do it, Henry. We've always been a team. Don't do it. <laughs> body of Bart drops to the tracks. A thin smile crosses Henry's lips. Then he straightens his clothes and begins walking down the tracks. Somewhere along the line, there'd be a station. He would escape through that. Without Bart, he could move around quickly, lay low till the excitement died down, then come back again. He began whistling as he walked along, hands in his pockets. His fingers touched the fine gold watch. That was something really to be proud of. Yes, he would go away. Maybe, maybe he'd go to the sea. A nice rest wouldn't hurt him. He'd always find a way to pick up a few pounds and maybe find a sweet young thing to... What's that? Henry pauses uncertainly. Looks back where the sound is growing. But the sound was getting nearer and nearer. The train! It can't be, it can't be... I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. He stumbles over the tracks, jumps to his feet and rushes on. His hands brush the narrow walls for some way of escape. But I think... Nothing. It can't be. It can't be. The train stopped running at 11.30. It just can't be. But now the sound of the approaching train fills the tunnel. No escape. No escape. <laughs> then in the growing light, Henry sees a way out. A door. An emergency door. Oh, I've got to get it open! Get it open! He throws himself against the door, his fingers tighten around the handle, and the rumble of the train is now a continuous thunder. Throw it open! Throw it open! It must! It must! But the handle, unused for years, refuses to budge. Now the train is rounding the last bend and tunnel, its headlights spearing through the gloom. Open! Open! But Henry hasn't the strength to open the door. In his last frantic terror, as he turns to face the onrushing train, a sudden thought knifes its way to his tortured mind. You need more than brains, Henry. You need muscles, too. Bart had said that. Bart had the strength. Bart could have opened the door. Henry raises his arms as if to ward off a terrible blow. And the train thunders on.
across London in a small office in the city morgue. The widow of the Right Honorable Donald Bailey has come to claim the personal effects of her late husband. This is all we found on him, madam. His clothes, this tie clip, the umbrella, and the loose change. They weren't satisfied to steal his wallet and his ring. They even had to take his watch. Was it a valuable watch? Only to him. It had been in his family for generations and had become quite antiquated. Kept time very badly. Gained an hour a day or more. Yes, I dare say whoever stole the watch will have nothing but trouble. If time means anything to him. Next week over most of these stations, we'll bring you another original story about the land of the shadows. Eclipse. The strange tale of a man who woke from unconsciousness to find himself a hunted murderer. It will give you another opportunity to examine at close range the strange impulses which lure human beings into their dark venture. Pursuit was written by Larry Marcus and Robert Light and featured Marvin Miller as Henry and Eric Snowden as Bart. The narrator was John Lake. Original music by Dean Fossler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your government needs your help during the current meat shortage. Yes, your government asks you as a patriotic duty to play square with meat. If every person paid no more than legal ceiling prices and exchanged the proper ration points for meat, the black market would be stamped out. It's that simple and that difficult. Your government, through the Office of Price Administration, sets these rationing and price controls to protect you, to ensure you that you'll get your fair share of the meat available. So do your share. Play square with meat. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Thanks for listening to this week's Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you like the show, please share it with someone you know who also loves Old Time Radio and Pulp Audio. If you want to hear even more, drop an email to WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com and get an instant reply with links to download full-length Pulp audiobooks pulp ebooks and old time radio shows absolutely free that's weird darkness at radioarchives.com i'm darren marlar i'll see you next time for retro radio old time radio in the dark Music